going on, Center City Church? You already know. Woo! Yes, excited to be here. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. We had a great Sunday. We did. Did you Mother's see all the Day. babies? I know. They're so cute. They are. I even peeked during some of the prayer because it was just too distracting to have a cute <laughs> baby right in front of me. That's it. Um, and them cheeks. There was so much baby cheeks on the stage this Sunday. I loved it. I know. It's so, it's just, I love how we do baby dedication on Mother's Day because it's just a perfect picture of the church family coming together to say, like, Yes, you guys are the parents. It is your child, but we as a community have a role to play also in building a culture where kids can grow up and know about Jesus and glorify yeah, him. And absolutely. I just love it. It's yeah. so fun. And it's great to see the stories. Like, um, And a lot of people don't know, but some of those babies were, um, after, uh, after years of trying, some of these babies were surprises. Other mm -hmm. babies were very well planned and just kind of happened according to the life plan of, of the couples. But um, it doesn't change the way that moms look at their kids. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was just a beautiful picture of Sunday of not just moms and their love for kids and dads and their love for kids, but also God's love for us. So, yeah, 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 which is such a smooth transition. Well, thank you. I'm a into professional. <laughs> <laughs> talking about the last message in our Very Good series, Losing Very Good, which, P.S., I wish you had made a Biggest Loser, like, anyway, Very Good Loser <laughs> reference, but it's okay. Another time. But we talked about a very fitting topic on Mother's Day, just destruction. Yeah, <laughs> it seemed like it yeah. was perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great, great message. Yeah. Um, it actually was a great message and um, because of how it ended. But before we get to the end, I just want to talk a little bit about this idea. We've spent two weeks talking about very good, how God created the world, what his, his perfect plan was. And then this week you talked about what happened when that went wrong. Will you talk just a little bit about the shame that entered when Adam and Eve ate the fruit? Yeah, so in chapter 2 of Genesis, we read um, that Adam and Eve were naked and they felt no shame. L legitimately, that's the passage that we read before we step into chapter 3, where they make a willing decision to disobey God and shame does step in. Um, unfortunately for Adam and Eve, the way they handled that shame uh, was really unhealthy. Um, they instantly went, of course, to try to fix the problem themselves. Um, sin, shame steps, sin steps in, shame takes over, and we instantly try to figure out like what's going on. Um, but they ultimately hid from God, and we find that shame will lead to hiding. Um, when God does approach them and, hey, why are you hiding? Well, we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Their first kind of instinct was to figure out who to blame. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Adam blames Eve and then blames God for giving him Eve. And then yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I had never really thought about it that way before. I just saw Adam blaming Eve, but he says, you know, it was the woman you, you gave, gave me. me. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I think at the core of humanity, whenever there's something we don't understand, we do tend to blame the creator. And I don't know if that's because we fully don't understand him or we have a misunderstanding of who he is, if, uh, you know. Um, but, but we see in Adam this, this, this idea that I think a lot of us struggle with, right? Like, well, it's the, the, you made me this way, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, you, I, I didn't have a choice in the parents that you gave me, and I didn't have a choice in my upbringing, so it must be your fault, and we'll cast blame on God. Eve blames the enemy, right? It's the, sa it's the snake, the, the snake in the garden is the one who did this, and um, regardless whose fault it is, what we find is within Adam and Eve, there's no remedy. Um, but that's what I love about the story. God steps in and he searches for them. He finds them. Not only does he find them, he creates uh, instant provision, like let me sacrifice mm -hmm. this animal, let me create clothes to help you navigate your shame in this moment. But then he introduces the redemption of Jesus through the curse that he places on the snake, right? That yeah. you'll, you will bruise his heel, but her offspring will crush your head. And um, we just see the introduction of the redemption story at the end of this passage, which I, I just, I'm enamored with. Yeah, and even you just briefly mentioned it, but one of the things you mentioned on Sunday that I'd never really thought about before is Adam and Eve had tried to cover their shame. They had sewn leaves together, and God saw that that wasn't enough and acted in the moment, not in a like, oh, now well, look what you've done, and I need to figure out how to take care of you, but the way you're trying to take care of yourself isn't enough. I'm going to give you more. And you actually mentioned that that was the first sacrifice yeah. in the Bible that God was doing to cover their shame. It's a really beautiful picture of God's love in the moment. 
which really lended well for the Mother's Day conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Because honestly, the first kind of sense of that love I saw in the heart of my mom. She would get me ready before everybody else. I'd have this, you know, she'd have this conversation with me where she would sit me down with cereal and, and watching a cartoon, and she'd be like, all right, you just got to make sure you stay still. <laughs> like, just make sure you stand still. Don't mess up what I've kind of created, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. And in my six-year-old rambunctious self, like all of us, jumping on the couch, rolling on the floor, there was always this moment before we leave the house where she would have to return me to that state, tuck in my little shirt, mm -hmm. arrange my little tie, make sure my little vest was buttoned. Hide the shoe polish. <laughs> yeah, hide the <laughs> shoe polish. If you um, didn't hear that story, go back and watch. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it is a beautiful picture of a God who makes us right. We screw it up, but out of his love is grace, and grace, he's willing through the life of his son, Jesus, um, to make us right again, right? Mm -hmm. He came that we would have life and have it to the fullest not because of what we've done, but because of what he's done. And, and, you know, I feel like it was an encouragement maybe to some people who are even watching now. Like, you might feel that life's a little disheveled and out of place. Um, we serve a God who makes things very good, and, he, and he, he'll take the time to lovingly reshuffle things and make sure that you're, you know, for lack of a better term, retuck you and then yeah. <laughs> make sure you're arranged so that you can live life to the fullest. Yeah, and I think part of the reason that imagery is so powerful is you just kind of understand kids are going to be kids. Like Absolutely. the way a parent a parent and their humanity might be a little frustrated in the moment, but there's kind of this expectation of like, I know that he doesn't really understand how to sit still this long, which helps sometimes when we think of God as just kind of judging us, which God has the ability to judge. He's the one who can, but we kind of take away that love sometimes when we think about the way God sees us. And yet that picture is so beautiful that it's like he had a plan yeah. <laughs> because he knows humanity. Yep. Um, and that plan was Jesus, which is so cool that it even comes up in the right afterwards when he does the, you can read it. Cause I can't remember exactly what he says to the snake, um, that she will, her offspring yep. will strike your head. You will strike his you heel. You will strike his heel. You yep. can go ahead. And yeah, yeah. No, that's it. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Her offspring. So, uh, you know, it wasn't a Mother's Day message, but really within the scope of the gospel, you, you hear mm -hmm. God put kind of at the forefront of this, this gospel narrative that out of the seed of a woman, that this, this child would be born that will crush your head. And uh, it's, uh, to me, ultimately, family, the picture of family, and the reason for family is to point us to a picture of God's love for humanity. I love it. So we're ending the Very Good series, yeah. but we're not done with the conversation. So I just want to make sure if you're watching, yeah. as we get into the summer, we're going to have two follow-up conversations to this Very Good series. The first one on Saturday, June 18th, will be a Very Good Marriage conversation. Oh, can't wait. It's going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. Round tables. It'll be laid back. I promise you, you will laugh a lot. That's kind of the hope but it also will spark, um, it, it just kind of next steps in the conversation of how to live a very good marriage. Yeah, and then the next month, July 16th, that Saturday morning, we'll be having a very good singleness conversation, yes. which and again, is something super excited about. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun and really just spark the conversation of how to live in that place of singleness in a way that honors God. That's very good. I'm yeah, excited about yeah. that too. So if you're part of the Center City family, keep an eye on your inbox. You'll get ways to sign up to those. If you don't get our weekly emails, this is the perfect time to Absolutely. go to centercity.church slash what's up and give us your information, and we'd be glad to get you on our email list and send you that. Is there any, like, final wisdom from this very good series that you want to give everyone? No, I mean, it's just been a lot of fun. I, I do feel like we just scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. There's so much, not just in Genesis, but, you know, not to, to, to get you too far ahead, but even in our next series as we walk through James, there's just, uh, uh, this scripture works as a blueprint. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it works. It's not a blueprint that hasn't been proven. And um, really, for those of you who may be struggling, it's a great place to start figuring out how to realign yourself to the will and heart of God. Love it. Love it. Well, guys, thanks for chatting with us today. And we cannot wait to see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m., yeah. right here or online. Have a great week.